Is, is the ELD mandate um, making your inspector's jobs easier or more difficult? Some inspectors, depending on their their experience with what used to be AOBRDs for the most part, it really doesn't have a correlation to long or shorter inspections. What does have a correlation to the longer inspection is inspectors were accustomed to seeing five to ten different types of AOBRDs in the past. Now they have the opportunity to see anywhere between 200 and 300 different ELDs. So at this point, there's really no way of inspectors being able to know how to navigate each one of those. So what prolongs the inspection is when they stop a driver that is not aware of how to use his own device. So if the drivers are properly trained and they really know how to use the device, they know how to transfer files like they're supposed to, then in theory, the inspection is taking less amount of time. The file transfers, it goes to the rods, the inspector can look at the log, and it should be a quicker process. Do, do drivers tend to be pretty well trained with the ELD? Are you, are you finding they have difficulties with it? What we are finding and what we're hearing is not necessarily that they're not trained on the device, but more so that they don't know what they have. So they know they have something electronic, but they're not sure whether they have an AOBRD or an ELD. So the hardware they're carrying in a lot of cases can be an ELD compliant piece of hardware, but it currently is bringing in AOBRD software. So the company gave them a new device. They presume it's an ELD, but in fact, it's running AOBRD software. And the intricacies and the the usage of an AOBRD versus an ELD is not the same. So when the officer asks the driver to transfer a file, in the old AOBRD system, that tends to be a PDF emailed to the officer specifically. In an ELD, it's not the case. It's a file that goes through either by web services or local, depending on what the VLD it is and depending on what the state agency is asking for, but it's not a PDF that gets emailed to the inspector. So it goes differently. The inspector has to give the driver a unique identifier to put into their ELD to make the file upload. Those are the types of things that I think both inspectors and drivers are having difficulty communicating roadside. So that, your first question, slows down the process a little bit. And then, you know, drivers are supposed to have the instruction card in the truck. If they have the instruction card, the instruction card will most likely identify which of those two devices it is. So if the driver doesn't know where that instruction card is or he doesn't have it with him, there's a charge for that offense to not have it in the cab. And it also causes a question on the side of the road as to which device they have. So that would be my, my and I've been saying it to industry ever since ELD came out, that that is probably the most they can do to support themselves at roadside is to make sure the drivers know what they have and make sure that the drivers train on the device. Do they do they tend to like these ELDs? I mean, is it making it easier for them? The drivers? Yes. Um, again, I think it comes back to training. I think in some cases, I mean, even when you go back to when drivers went from paper logs to AOBRDs and they did it, uh, not because they had to, but because they wanted to, companies wanted to. Drivers, if you have talked to drivers, I mean, I used to talk to drivers years ago when I was on the road. Once they get used to it, they like it because it takes away driver error. You know, like one of the top violations in hours of service all the way along was, you know, form and manner violations. Drivers forget to put things on their paper log. They forget to add up the columns. They forget to sign the log. They are behind. So you stop a driver five duty statuses behind. They can get written up for all of those things and all of those things are citations. Electronic logging devices take away that, basically eliminate those types of violations for the most part. Um, because they're never gonna be behind on their log because the ELD keeps them up on it. They, you know, for the most part, they have to hit a button or check a box to certify the log. And in most cases can't move to the next day until they do. So there's things that protect the driver from getting those you know, those types of charges at the side of the road. And now we're down to looking for key aspects of hours of service violations, like being over the 11 hours driving or being over the 14 hours on duty, 
you know, the 30 minute rest break, things like that. It allows inspectors to focus more on that as opposed to all the other form and manner stuff that the ELD takes care of. Yeah, some drivers have complained that the ELD is making it necessary for some, some flexibility in hours of service. How do you feel about that? Well, I mean, you have to separate out the hours of service rules and the ELD rule. Nothing changed with the hours of service rules and drivers were to log their hours as they were when they were doing paper logs. So nothing has really changed. Now it's just an electronic log. So yes, has it brought out um, some areas where for lack of better words, maybe drivers were putting down that they were off duty when in fact they were on duty for 15 minutes. Like those are the types of things we're hearing where they're at a loading dock and they have to move the truck or they're parked on the side of the road and they have to move the truck because somebody has come and told them to move and they're trying to get their 10 hour rest break off. So there's those types of issues that came to light when ELDs came in where before they probably were just logging the fact that they were off duty even though they were driving. A lot of that has been taken care of with the recent interpretation that FMCSA came out for personal conveyance. So the personal conveyance application can be used to sort of bridge the gap between some of those types of issues that I mentioned and not having to manipulate your logbook, for lack of a word. I know it's still early in the game, but do you have a fe any feelings on whether this will actually reduce crashes with using ELDs? I don't, although, I mean, to, to the point when you have gone to crashes in the past and you've done accident investigations and it comes to light that the driver was in fact falsifying his logbook, I mean, you have to come back to the fact that fatigue may have been part of that collision. It is more difficult to falsify your log when you have an electronic kind of keeping you in tune with what you're actually doing. And most electronic logging devices help the driver and the operator in some cases because they have the ability, for the most part, to indicate when a driver is getting close to his hours. Where a paper log doesn't do that, so drivers may or may not have even known they were near their, you know, on duty of 14 hours when they're going to have to take a break. So now the ELD assists with that in a lot of cases. I know CVS. I've heard that CVSA inspectors don't like too many exemptions. Are all these exemptions re related to the ELD causing some difficulties? Again, they are if, and this is a suggestion that I've given to the industry over and over again, it's like if you're running under an exemption, if you're running under the ag exemption or you're running under the rental agreement exemption or all the other ones that, are, that could be out there or that may come, Ensure that your drivers have a copy of that exemption in the truck. Inspectors should know what the exemptions are, but you're right. They, you know, as they as they come out and as they change, you can't guarantee that every inspector on the side of the road is up to date as of yesterday. So, if something has changed and it's necessary for the inspectors to know, the industry should do themselves a favor and go to FMCSA's website and pull a copy of that and carry it with them. That way they can produce it at the side of the road. Any, do you have any tips for drivers as far as vis-a-vis you know, vis uh, ELDs? It's, it's sort of what I've been saying to companies and I say it to drivers too. It's like inspectors, again, I, I said it earlier, they can't possibly know 250 different devices. That driver needs to know one device and he needs to know it well. So. If he knows how that device works, if he knows how to navigate backwards and forwards from one day to the next, if the inspector asks to do so, plus he knows where his driver card is, he knows how to get to the instruct uh, the the manual. Because both of those can be electronic in fashion. So if they're in the device, the driver needs to know how to find them in the device. If they're in paper form, he needs to know where they are in his manual. He needs to know where his his uh, sufficient number of extra log books are. If the, if the device goes into a mouse mode, he needs to do paper logs or he needs to do computer generated logs. So make sure he has that stuff with him. And if he has all of that stuff with him, he knows how to use the device, the inspection's gonna go pretty smoothly. You know, I was 
earlier this year, I was at the Mid-America Trucking Show, and I, and I was spoke, speaking with one of the ELD manufacturers and at their booth, and they said that one of the first things drivers always ask is, can you tell me how to cheat on this? Are these things pretty much foolproof from what you've seen? Well, I mean, there's always where there's a will, there's a way. So, I mean, you know, you can equate it back to radar detectors, and then they came out with radar detector detectors and so on and so forth. So, do I know of any specific ways at this point? No. But could it be done? Probably. Um, so, I mean, that's going to come with time, and inspectors will look for that. And, you know, when they download the file and they find violations in the file, maybe they'll find it in the file and it's not actually on the device. Those things will probably come to pass once inspectors start doing compliance reviews. They may see things differently on the back end that officers are treating at roadside. So if that's happening, slowly but surely they should be able to find it. 